Okay, well, welcome to our mammalogy lab for today. Uh, so this is one of two that we're going to be covering. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about rodentia, which is our largest group of mammals, making up about 25% of the species, of the mammal species. So one of the things I should point out is that the slides posted at the eCampus will contain a few species that are not listed within these slides. Um, so when you're studying slides for your practical, uh, make sure that you're focusing on the species within these slides in this presentation. Um, the reason I put those extra species into the other slides is that's the list we would normally do. Um, but since we're stuck with online and I have to cover two different classes this week, um, I just wanted to go ahead and keep the shorter species list um, and stuff that I felt was easier to ID online. Um, so keep that in mind as you're going forward and studying. So within the order Rodentia, um, our first family is Sciaridae, which is going to be our squirrel species. So our first species is the eastern chipmunk, which is Tomius striatus. A um, very easy species, as most of these are to identify. Um, our only chipmunk species within this region, and then obviously you have that clear stripe pattern down the back to identify this species. Uh, one of the things I want to point, up, point out as we get going here um, is that you will not have to be able to ID all of these skulls either. Um, so when you're looking for your skulls that you need to be able to ID from picture, uh, focus on the skulls video that I have posted as well. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to focus on some of the details here, because there are some things I want to point out as we go through the skulls, um, and some stuff that's not going to be in that skulls presentation. But that skulls presentation is going to be the primary details and skulls that you need to know. Um, the stuff in the slides is going to be more about, well, how do you tell these species apart? Not that I'm going to want you to be able to see a picture and tell me what it is, but I still want you to know what some of the differences you can look for within these families to identify these different skulls. So when you're looking at the Sire species and you're looking at their skulls, um, there's two primary things that you can really look for. Uh, one is the notch that is present. So if you look and you can see this notch that's up above the orbital. So those will vary a little bit from species to species. You're also gonna see some variation um, within your post orbitals. So these right here. And then one of the other ones you can look for is this canal. There will be some differences within this canal between different um, Sire species. A lot of these will share similar uh, dental formulas as well, um, but there are some dentition differences between some of these species. So those are the things I want you to remember when you're trying to tell apart squirrel skulls. Um, those are the main things to focus on. So our next species is the Eastern Gray Squirrel, which is Sirus carolinensis. Uh, so this is one that has a different tooth count. So the main way you're going to identify the species is it's a larger size. Um, and then, of course, all of these squirrel species have the bushy tail, tail a lot bushier than you see within the chipmunk. Um, they're also pretty uniformly gray in color, which is a pretty big difference you're going to see between this and the fox squirrel. Um, so your eastern gray squirrel is our moderate size squirrel. It comes in between the other two that we're looking at. Um, and then you're seeing that strong gray color throughout, whereas the other two squirrels have more of a reddish pattern to them. So next is our eastern fox squirrel. So these are the largest of the three that we're looking at. Um, they're a good bit larger than gray. They also have this reddish tinge to their fur. So that reddish tinge is a really good identifier to tell these apart from gray squirrels. Um, the southern can have a black color morph of these species. And it's also important to note that the eastern fox squirrel is more of a southern species. As you move farther north, they're not gonna be as commonly found. Um, so you'll find gray fur, gray squirrels and red squirrels a lot farther north than you will find these eastern fox squirrels. So next is our red squirrel, which is Tomioscurus atsonicus. Uh, these are the smallest of the three that we're looking at. Um, these also have a really distinct red fur to them, uh, a lot more red than that tinge you'll see within the fox squirrel. And the other good characteristic to identify the species is that the ears tend to have tufts on the top of them. So there's ear tufts and that red fur and then a really small size is what you're looking for to identify a red squirrel. All right, 
and then these next two species are pretty hard to identify. Um, for the most part, you're going to either, you can look at, I believe there's a couple differences between the skulls that you can look at to tell apart the southern and northern flying squirrel. Um, and then also you can look at where they're occurring. There's some overlap in the middle of their ranges, um, but at the far extent, you'll only find one or the other. So that can help you tell these two species apart too. Um, like some of the other squirrels, they have that white underside, and then these are more of a dark gray upper side. And then, of course, they have that patagium between their arms to help them glide from tree to tree. So make sure you're looking for that as well. So like I said, the northern flying squirrel looks very similar to the southern. Um, darker base belly fur, often a darker tipped tail. Uh, but really, you're going to look at skulls or their range. You could also try to look at genetics to tell these two different species apart. Um, one of the other things I want to note is that there are some videos embedded within these slides. Those will be available to you online, but I'm not going to go through them within this lecture. So that'll be up to you to go back and take a look at those. All right, next we have the woodchuck Marmota monax, obviously one of the larger of this uh, family within the region. This is one of the skulls you'll have to know, so make sure you go back, take a look at that skulls video to look at the differences here. Um, they have these really strong post-orbital processes uh, that really give away the skull compared to some of the other rodents that we have to look at. Otherwise, uh, it's a pretty large, pretty large squirrel species. They have this mottled colored fur. Uh, I mean, most of you know what a woodchuck looks like, so go ahead and keep moving forward here. All right, so next is our family Castoridae. So within this, we have our beaver Castor canadensis, another skull that I'm going to want you to know. Um, that thick, wide zygomatic arch is a really key to identify this species, and then obviously they have this broad, flat tail with no fur on it. Um, so another pretty easy species to identify. Uh, next is the family Erethizontidae. Um, and so the only member of that that we have is the porcupine, which is Erethizon dorsatum, uh, one of my favorite scientific names. Another skull that you have to know, so make sure you take a look at that. Um, there's these really large infraorbital foramens. So take a look for those. Um, that's really your key identifying characteristic for the species. You can't really see it within the slide here or the pictures, um, but it's very clear in the video. So take a look at that. Also, of course, the species has quills. So next we're going to move into the family Muridae. Um, a really important characteristic of this, of this family is that these are the domestic exotic rodents, and they don't have fur on their tails. So make sure that you know that family Muridae has no fur on the tails. It's a really good key identifying characteristic for the species. Uh, so Mus muscalis is our house mouse, um, small and brown. They don't really have this bicolored pattern you see in some of the other wild mice that we have around here that you'll see later. Um, and then of course, no fur on the tail, which the other species we see will have fur on the tail. Uh, we also have Rattus norvegicus, which is our Norway rat, and Rattus rattus, which is our black rat. So in the Norway rat, uh, it's the largest that we have, and the tail is less than the body length. Whereas if you're looking at your black rat, your tail is actually greater than your body length. So that tail length is a good way to tell those two species apart. Also, you can tell these two apart by skull. Um, so I'm, this is not one of the ones we cover in the skull video, but I do want you to know that the Nor Norway rat has more parallel and pronounced temporal ridges, and that that black rat has these bowed out ridges. So if you look at your Norway rat skull, they really do look very parallel within that skull. And if we are doing this in, per in person, this is one I would definitely have you look at. Um, and then that black rat is very clearly more bowed out. When you have them side by side in person, it's really easy to see the difference between those two skulls. All right, so our next family is Christidae. And so these will actually have fur on their tails. So this is where we make that switch back over. So our deer mouse and a white-footed mouse look very similar to one another. Um, they do have this bicolored pattern to both of them where you have that white underside and that brown uh, top side. Uh, the deer mouse has a really strongly bicolored tail and that tail is longer than the body slash head length. The zygomatic arch on that skull is also pinched inward, more so than what you see on the white-footed mouse. On the white-footed mouse, we have a more rich reddish-brown color and the tail is shorter as well. So instead of the tail being longer than the body slash head length, it's shorter. 
Um, still a really hard identifying characteristic to see in person. A lot of the times, if you're looking at both of these species, you're going to use genetics to tell them apart. Um, but make sure that also you know that the arch is, zygomatic arch is pinched inward on that deer mouse. Next within Crest today, we have our wood rats. So there's two different ones we have here, which is our eastern wood rat, Neotoma floridana, and then the Allegheny wood rat, which is Neotoma magister. Once again, these wood rats are pretty hard to tell apart between the two. Um, you might use genetics to do it, or as you can tell up top, there is a difference within the range. So that range difference is a really good way to tell these two apart. In fact, it would be pretty much the primary way to tell these two apart. Even the skulls on these can be pretty hard to separate. Uh, the main way you're going to know these apart from your black rat and your Norway rat is that these do have fur on the tail. So fur on the tail, like all the other Christ today too. So make sure you're looking for that fur on the tail to make sure you have these wood rats. All right, so next we're going to take a look at a couple of voles. Uh, so this is Myotes gaperi, which is our southern redback vole. They have a very, very distinct red back. So if you see these in person, they have a red back and gray sides. And you can really see that kind of bicolor pattern. It stands apart really well. Um, very, very pronounced and easy to see. Uh, it's also important to note that voles in general have thicker zygomatic arches than mice. So if you're looking at the skulls, you can look at that zygomatic arch. And it's pretty easy to see the difference between that and a mouse skull. So with these, you're looking for that distinct red back. And then if you have the skull, you're going to look for that zygomatic arch. All right, so next we have our meadow vole, which is Microtus pensilvaconicus. Uh, they have a medium hairy tail, like all of Christ today, we do have a hair, hair on the tail. They also are really common species. Um, they do have small ears, but they're conspicuous. So while they're small, if you really have a look at one of these in your hand, you are going to be able to see those ears still. Um, obviously not as pronounced as they were in that southern redback bowl, though. Uh, the belly is also white and gray in color. Like I said, a very common species. This is one of the more common meadow voles. Uh, the meadow vole is one of the more common voles that you will actually catch. All right, next in Christ today, we have Ondantra zibethicus, which is our muskrat. So the muskrat has a long, a long tail with hair on it. Um, you know, once again, a pretty common species for us to be able to identify. A lot larger than the other members of this family that we're looking at. Um, obviously, they have a uh, have a uh, laterally, laterally flattened tail. Um, the nutria have a slightly different tail. They're larger, and they have a round rat-like tail, while the muskrat is laterally flattened. Um, so that's one way you can tell the difference between the two. Um, for this class, you just really need to know the muskrat, though. And then the muskrat skull is another skull that you will need to know. Um, so you have these eyes that are facing forward, and then these uh, post-orbital, they kind of have like a, a nub kind of pattern to them that you can see. Uh, and that'll be covered in the video as well for the skulls. All right, and then this should be our last slide, which is family Dipodidae. Uh, once again, these have two-tone bodies, and they have very, very long tail um, and feet. So if you see these in person, the tail is going to give it away pretty clearly, um, a lot longer than the other species that we have. So within this, these are our jumping mice. So we have our meadow jumping mouse and our woodland jumping mouse. Uh, the meadow is a little more brown with less reddish color on the sides. And then also the woodland has a white tip on a long tail. So if you're looking for that white tip, which you can see on the woodland jumping mouse here, so here you have a little bit of that white tip, which you don't have on your meadow jumping mouse, so that's a good way to look for it. And then there's also that subtle difference in color. Another way you can tell these two apart is if you have the skulls. Um, the meadow jumping mouse has three upper cheek teeth. Well, the woodland jumping mouth has four. Um, so there's a few different ways. You're going to look for that tip on the tail. You're going to look for that difference of coloration. And you are able to tell them apart um, by skull as well. Obviously, if you look at the range of these two, uh, there's a pretty big difference between those range. Obviously, where the woodland is, you also have the meadow. There's a lot of area where you're going to find the meadow where you will not find the woodland. And of course, these ranges do overlap within West Virginia. Okay, so I just want to restate, um, if a species was not within this presentation that I'm giving right now, uh, you are not responsible to know it for the practical. 
Um, the reason that the slides I gave you has the full list is I just want you to know what we would normally cover within a year. Um, they're just species that are either hard to cover online or really I wanted to cut down the list because I have these uh, carnivora and rodentia to cover within the same day. So that's why I cut that down. All right, thank you.